Welcome to Learn by the Experts, presented to you by the Women Business Owners Alliance of Pioneer Valley. The WBOA is made up of over 100 entrepreneurs. And today we have two of our members here with us who are going to share their tips and expertise and their knowledge with you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. And my name is Susan Allen from Susan Allen Financial, and my co-host is... I'm Freda Brown from Divorce Financial Services. And today we have with us Jenny Sumi of Sumi Design Studio, Studio and Amy uh, Wolf from Amy Wolf Color Consulting. And I am going to ask you wonderful ladies, what is all this trending? I, everything I hear is the trend this year is this and we have to have this color. What are they talking about and how important is that to me? It's not. <laughs> it's not? <laughs> but all the magazines tell me this is the trend. Well, if you're going to use a trend color, it should be as an accent or um, something that you bring in. Don't paint your house that color. Don't paint any of your interiors that color. Don't. Uh, it's like a short-term relationship. <laughs> <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't commit. Don't, don't commit. Um, okay. It, you know, it's like skinny jeans or um, bell bottoms or platform shoes. Just don't do it. <laughs> and I think really what's driving a lot of this trend conversation is the marketing push. That obviously with, you know, in all markets, we want something new, we want something fresh, you know, and clearly manufacturers and design companies, paint companies, you know, they want to sell more product. And so it's, we've kind of gotten into this um, continuous relationship where, um, you know, the color marketing people push the trend colors and the manufacturers, you know, thrive on new stuff and then they feed that information out to consumers and consumers really feel compelled to use that information as something reliable, something trustworthy. So I, I have issues with the trends. It's the question I get asked more often than anything else in my business. And, um, you know, trends can really be a trap. Mm -hmm. so. so let's just get this on the table. What are the color <laughs> trends for this season? <laughs> are there color trends for the season that there is a push that you're seeing? Like we're you said about, in the magazines. We're about to flip to a new year. Okay. Um, the color for the past year was? Radiant or Which looks about something like this. Okay. You know, that. I mean, this color should never go on your wall. Right. I don't that even know if it should go on your body in a color, uh, okay. you know, clothing. Um, and soon, uh, I think in November, they'll announce the new color for the year. Okay, that's So one that's that Pantone. Usually... They're sort of like is it the, the big color people. A, do they have a spring and a fall, or is it just one color, one colors all year long? For they the do year? Um, spring and fall for clothing. And what you see happening throughout the different markets is color Ooh. goes to the runway first. So it shows up in Paris, in Milan, oh. on the you know, high fashion runway. And then it trickles down into the home decor market. So the colors we see um, in Paris this year, you know, we'll see in Target in two years. Okay, that <laughs> so, makes sense. Yeah. And what about, I've always heard colors and mood and kind of creating a mood it's huge. in your room. Yeah, it's huge. So where, like what, you know, what colors should we think about, like let's say for the kitchen? or uh, right now I'm redoing a mud room. What, dark? <laughs> <laughs> one, of my, one of my things I always say to my clients is decorate in the color of dirt. Okay. And nowhere is that more important than in a mud room. Right. But anyway, right. you want to talk about kitchens? <laughs> uh, it, it should be a color that you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. A lot of it comes down to your reaction to a color. There, you know, there's a color impression and there's color psychology. Mm -hmm. And color psychology is the idea that blue is calming or that red is hot and sexy yeah. or that yellow is happy. But if you do not like yellow, then it mm -hmm. is not a happy color and you should not use it. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we would do is we would come in and listen, talk to you and listen to your responses to certain questions and find out if there is a color that you really, really like that makes you feel good and mm -hmm. then work from there. Um, it, it has a lot to do with your preferences. And that's why I think trends can be a trap. 
Mm -hmm. because trends don't account for that highly personalized response to color. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we mm -hmm. have so many layers of relationship to color, cultural, personal, mm -hmm. uh, and even the way color shows up in a particular space based on the lighting. Mm -hmm. And so when you get sucked into this, you know, annual <laughs> trend color thing, but it has nothing to do with you and your space and your preferences, it, it just, it gets people into color that, that doesn't really work for them. Right. And ultimately, color's powerful, so we want it to, we want it to work for you. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. What yeah. about the look like the all white with the, you know? Whoa! Just don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that was a common. Yeah. I've, I've seen that in it's a lot of. It's very, them. very. Uh, I right. mean, the all white kitchen has been everywhere for the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and it's trending out. Oh, it and is? what's okay. trending in now is black yeah. for kitchens. Interestingly mm -hmm. enough, so I mean, it depends on where you are in the country. So. But so when I first built my house and my first re uh, refrigerator I bought was Harvest Gold. Now you know how <laughs> old I am, Harvest Gold, and lasted and I had everything in my house Harvest Gold. My bathroom was Harvest Gold, my kitchen was Harvest Gold. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any Harvest Gold left in my house, thankfully. But If you had stuck around, it would have trended back in. Yeah. yeah it's just a matter of <laughs> how, long, how long do you have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> so. So how do we avoid those things? We see, uh, I really kind of liked my Harvest Gold refrigerator <laughs> at the time, but not, I'm, I'm going through the stores and I see just the, the stainless steel or the black or the white, and, and to me, I would rather see a cream than a black or a white, but I'm not seeing cream in the, in the markets no, anymore. No, they've, they've almost stopped making what's called bisque. Mm -hmm. uh, that that is, is almost unavailable, which is unfortunate because it's easy on the eye. Mm -hmm. It goes well with a lot of things, um, but it's just, it's trended out. There's so a new one called Slate. Which is sort of like a... That's coming in. That's like a charcoal. Yeah. Right. That's yeah, but that's nice. still Black, deeply dark. into that yeah. high contrast. The reason I say don't get me started on the all white thing is because mm -hmm. the basis of my uh, color study is scientific. And I, I've learned... Um, about the physiological response to color. And really an all white environment is, is just, it's too much, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's too strong. I liken it to coming out of a movie theater. You know, when you've been in the dark and you come out and there's all this light, you know, that's really kind of what an all white kitchen is doing physiologically to your eye. Right. So it's not ergonomic, it's not user friendly. Okay, so. Well, let's go back to my mudroom. <laughs> Good. Because I was actually <laughs> thinking about a like a lighter cream color, but that's probably not the best choice. Is that what, what I'm hearing from you? I'm going to put tile on the floor, but mm -hmm. I have the dogs, and okay, there's a lot of right. traffic going through there, and I'm just wondering what colors would probably just help me with that. Well, you also have to think about your finishes, mm -hmm. because if you're doing, if you want to do the walls in cream, yeah, just be sure that it's a highly scrubbable. Uh, paint, paint. Okay. And that you're willing to put in the time to do the right, scrubbing. Which I'm probably not. So. <laughs> that's an important thing to know about yourself. Yeah. And that's yeah. another sort of a, a questionnaire I take my clients through. Mm -hmm. You know, what is your relationship with dirt? Mm -hmm. You know, do you, you love to clean? <laughs> do you want to see the dirt? <laughs> do you want to see your dirt mm -hmm. like the minute it's there? Or do you want to see it when you're ready to see it? Okay. You know, so ca think camouflage. Yeah. You know? All right, yeah. So, so, so is that dark, like the, the multicolor yes. dark floor? Yeah, and I, I suggest people when they're picking flooring mm -hmm. to get sort of a model looking, you know, kind of a stone analog yep. and make sure that there's some warm color in it and some cool color in it. Right. Mixed because it'll give you more flexibility with your wall color. So. And also with the dogs. Right, right. <laughs> because it match, match your dogs. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> what I'm saying is in my kitchen I have that going on. Yeah. And you really because it has the different colors, you right. can't tell when it's getting right. a little dirty. People, you know, don't notice it as if it was just a solid, right. especially a lighter color. Right, right. Mm -hmm. so. Now, what about house colors? Are there any um, rules to that as far as what you want to paint your house? Exteriors? Yes, exteriors is what I'm talking wow. about. And are there any <laughs> that don't react well with sun, or did all the paints pretty much the same? Oh, no. There's definitely what's called fugitive pigments. Red is one of them. Um, and uh, I'm sad to say I have a red front door. It's got a western exposure, and I have to repaint it every year. Okay. So even top quality paint, um, it just it doesn't stay. It doesn't stay. And so okay. I think what's important is to think about over the lifetime of the paint job, 
how is that exterior color going to change? Mm -hmm. So you paint your house red in five years of fading, what are you going to get? Right, Pink. that's true. Pink. You know, okay. Going from a dark gray to a paler gray, going from a dark blue to a lighter blue, maybe that's okay. But if you started with a red house, you sure don't want to end up with a pink house. <laughs> that's true. That's absolutely true. So. And you don't want to let your kids choose your color of your house. There's a house in, that's right. there's a house in our town that has, a, it's purple and pink. Mm -hmm. And it was because mm -hmm. the daughter, who was five years old, chose the color of the wow. house. Okay. <laughs> I'm not always even on board with kids choosing colors for their own rooms. I like to give them a range of choices, but mm -hmm. a range of choices that are pre-selected by me and mom. But, you know, every family is different, so. So what about if you're doing, you're doing your whole house over and you're painting, do, should all the rooms kind of blend together so that it's a, a uniform or can you have a room that's you know, a brighter for different, like your living room brighter and not have it look like it's all part of the same house, just be totally different? Well, you could, there are a couple um, schools of thought. One would be you could use the same color throughout the house and it would look different in each room based on the lighting conditions and that can work. Or it depends on the sight lines. So if you can see this room from this room there should be some sort of connecting color or some sort of flow to it as opposed to oh look there's the red room and that's all you see. Mm -hmm. I think there's a balance, you know, um, between what we're looking to do is create enough variety and interest as you move from room to room without having so much variety that you feel like you're moving around Disney World. Okay, we're in frontier land now and oh, it's space land, you know. You want to feel like you're in the same house, I think. I mean, that to me, that's the goal is to have a sense of cohesiveness. Uh, and yet, you know, again, I think it's, it comes down to personal preference too. If you have a wildly stressful job and you want to come home and, and you need serenity, then yes, painting all one color could be the answer to that level of serenity. You know, if you're the kind of person who thrives on visual stuff like we do, um, you know, maybe there's a higher threshold for variety. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe there's more room to be, you know, have color change from room to room. So. And that comes back to client preference. That's why it's so right. important to sit down with, um, not necessarily everybody in the family, but sit down with the, the major um, decision maker mm -hmm. and, and work through, you know, I just, this is what I need. These, you know, these are colors that I've liked and, you know, let's move forward from here. But there's, there's a lot of input that goes into it before you make any of the choices. And mm -hmm. I think what people are most afraid of is going too far. Yep. And so what they do is they, they make choices from a very conservative place. Mm -hmm. And they pull back and they don't really maximize the opportunity. You know, and, and more often than not when, when people paint without professional help, they either get way too much color or they kind of don't do enough and they sort of feel like they've missed an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So in our work, what we try to do is nudge people up to that limit of their comfort, figure out where they want to be, where they're going to be happiest, and get them there safely and comfortably without them, you know, going over the brink and ending up with a radiant orchid <laughs> <laughs> anywhere on any wall. <laughs> the dark side. Right, right. So. And, and I'm a huge fan of accessories mm -hmm. and um, soft goods. You can swap out a rug. Right. You can mm -hmm. get new pillows. Um, you can change the artwork, and you know that sort of thing gives you a little more leeway too. Exactly. So that mm -hmm. you, you know, from season to season or from year to year, you can change your look a little bit for not a whole, a big investment. Right. Instead of painting everything and yeah. getting all new furniture. Yeah. Absolutely. What about fashion? Is it a little bit different, the colors, when you're thinking about dressing yourself and what you want to, you know, put out there? Should you go with a little bit of a, you know, what's popular now, or should you stay to the colors that are good for your skin, and how do you really decide that? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, that I, <laughs> that's the second most often question I get asked, is mm -hmm. 
what, uh, what color should I wear? Does this right. look good on me? I'm like, no, I do walls. <laughs> I, do <paint. laughs> I don't know. Don't ask me that. But what I will say is that whether it's for clothing and fashion or home decor, when something's in style and it's your color, buy it. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. if, if, you know. Lots of it. Radiant Orchid, if that's your color, you love it, it's your power color, you know, buy those pillows because next year they'll be gone. Mm -hmm. So that's how to, you know, use the trend information to your advantage mm -hmm. and okay. make the trend your friend is, right. is to, you know, when you see your colors, when I, yeah, it, it just, you know, get them while they're there. <laughs> I want to go back to the room color again. So, yeah. So I've been told, or maybe I heard it in my thoughts somewhere, that if you put dark, if you have a small room and use dark colors, it makes it look smaller. And if you have a light color, it makes it look bigger. Is that so, or is that just my imagination? It's it's one of the the, the tropes. <laughs> <laughs> it's an urban so, myth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's an urban myth. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, you want to talk about that? Well, I have a, a chocolate brown bedroom, mm -hmm. and it's very relaxing. It it envelops you. You know, the, the, it, it's not a big room, but when I walk in, I just feel comfortable and enveloped and and mm -hmm. happy and relaxed and if it were a if it were a white or a lighter color I wouldn't necessarily feel that way, feel the same you know, way exactly. I, it, it's cozy and one of the tricks is if you paint the whole room including the ceiling the same color it really feels enveloping oh, wow. okay. a great example is if you've ever been to the Dober tea house mm -hmm. their bathroom is and the ceiling and the walls everything's all the same color it's wonderful the reason that works is because when we see boundaries where a wall mm -hmm. and a ceiling meet or where two walls meet where we see those boundaries our eye stops and it defines the space and okay. so it sends a message to our brain mm -hmm. about you know how large is this room you know and and Obviously, this is all going on in a deep level, but we take in this information and process size of room. So imagine a light-colored room. You can see all the corners of the room. You can see where the space is delineated. Whereas, if you wrap a room, like that bedroom, in chocolate, those boundaries recede. The edges basically kind of almost disappear into mm -hmm. the dark. Mm -hmm. And so you, it, it kind of, goes exactly the opposite of, of what we're taught to believe. I think the other myth is paint a dark room a light color mm -hmm. and paint, a, you know, because, you know, if you have this little dark room and you paint it a dark color, it's oh, just going to be like too like dark. No light in, no exactly, light exactly. No natural light. So paint it a light color. Mm -hmm. But really, in the absence of light, color just dies because color is light. Color is mm -hmm. reflected light. So what happens is you know, you put white on a wall in a room that gets no natural light and it's just sad and gray and shadowy. So mm -hmm. I think for those dark rooms, just load them up with rich, saturated color and, mm -hmm. and it takes on a life of its own, whereas otherwise the white would just be dreary and depressing. Very close. So, yeah, yeah. Lots of color myths out there. Yes, I guess there are. Now, what about, like, prints or different colors together? Do you see that much or are most, you know, do, should rooms always be just one color? Have you seen people doing stripes or one wall in one room a little lighter or darker? Mm -hmm. Is that is that something you've seen before? Oh, yeah. Okay. All, all sorts. Of, you don't have, you, you're not stuck with just flat walls. Right. Okay. You can use paintable wallpaper okay. for texture. You can stripe it. You can do, um, paisley stencils you can do anything and and um mixing colors is great it doesn't have to all be right okay I mean, that's so another that's, myth yeah that, that it all has, has to be, to be the, the same, same color all right okay and, and i see I accent wondering. walls coming back yes accent walls are trending back in wallpaper is trending back in um and wallpaper is a great place to use you know kind of like an accent wall thing to use wallpaper mm -hmm. on that behind mm -hmm. a headboard Okay. Things like that. I used that paintable wallpaper in a bathroom where the walls were such a mess yeah. and needed such care that the homeowner was not willing to invest in that because mm -hmm. the house was about to be listed. And we couldn't really find wallpaper that worked color-wise because mm -hmm. there's a limited range. I mean, the wallpaper stocks are growing. We're getting more interesting colors. This was a, a while back. But we put that up and then we had, you know, thousands and thousands of colors to choose from you know, by using this textured paintable wallpaper. 
I think it's a product people don't know about. I never it's, heard of it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, no, it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's so, fabulous. So it's it's really good for an old house where you want to cover a, yep. like a, a, exactly. a bad wall and mm -hmm. if you've got bad plaster, but it's yeah, fabulous. Plaster. Or if somebody did a really bad job putting up the last wallpaper, and when it comes <laughs> down, it brings half the wall board with it. That's oh that yeah. was okay. that yeah. was the situation I used it in. So okay. Anyway. And you should, if you have wallpaper, you should always take it down before you put new wallpaper. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although I've worked with a very fine painter in in town who has actually done a prep sanding and painting of a wallpaper in a house where it just wasn't coming down, and we would have had to take out the wallboard and redo it. Oh. So it can be done. It's not ideal. Yeah, Ideally, my mother, used to, my mother used to wallpaper over wallpaper over <laughs> wallpaper. Oh, over oh, wallpaper. I, know. <laughs> I had four or five layers in my childhood bedroom yeah. growing up. I think the kicker is you have to put wallpaper up properly. You know, mm -hmm. you know, it needs to be hung with the right materials. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, going up to make sure it comes down properly. So, anyway, there's also okay. peel and stick now. Oh right, that's which true. Is, which is interesting. Well, and, and that's a, good for a trends. Good, a good trend or temporary. Right. If you are going to list your house and you want to do something interesting, you don't want to invest in doing the anaglypta and getting it hung properly. There are a whole range now of peel and stick wallpapers. I should do that oh, wow. for my daughter's yeah. college dorm. Yes, she would love that. <laughs> She's in one of those dark gray, sad rooms, with you know where you can't do anything. So hmm. yeah, the peel and stick yeah. would be great. Yeah. Now, before someone lists their house, are there any color things they should think about mm. that makes it more enticing for um, prospective buyers to come in and see? Well, going back to exteriors, <laughs> if you look, uh, if you listen to realtors, yes, um, mm -hmm. yellow is one of the top colors oh, really? for, for, for an that. exterior. Really? One of the I top selling, never known that. selling colors. I don't know why, um, but first of all, you should consider getting a stager. Okay. Because the you need to clear everything out of your house. Mm. And a fresh paint job is never a bad idea. Right, it can't hurt. But it but it needs to be fairly neutral, probably more neutral than than I would do for myself. Mhm. Mm but you wouldn't okay. want a, a white. No, no, no white. white. No, no white. white. No, no beige. White. I mean, no. I think there are a lot of realtors um, who in the past have felt that just beiging out the whole house is the right thing to do. No. I hold a different opinion. I think that when you're selling a house, when you're selling anything, you want to have a strong emotional response in your buyer. Mm -hmm. And I don't know anybody who's ever walked into a room and said, I've always wanted a beige room. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I just don't think it happens. So my belief personally is that we don't beige everything out. That mm -hmm. well-chosen color, color that's, you know, subtle, but has some what I consider emotional content, some beauty to it. Mm -hmm. um, talking about white kitchens, I mean, white kitchen cabinets, it's something that a lot of people love. People, I hear it all the time, I've always wanted a white kitchen. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's true. I mean, it's, it's something people are really drawn to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, soft. It gives a clean feeling to it. Something right. about it. There's just something magical about a, a white kitchen. I don't think the white on white on white is a good idea. You know, white mm -hmm. with different color counters. But I think well-chosen color is more likely to elicit an emotional and positive response mm -hmm. from a potential buyer. Okay. Where, mm, no beige, no white. <laughs> so what would be Forget a different color that. if you're want to be kind of neutral but not beige or white what would you put in a co what color would you suggest i really like gray yeah we're seeing a lot of gray gray is the new beige mm -hmm. um and i think uh what i like to use is um what I'll, i would call colorful grays you know colors mm -hmm. that are really very grayed down greens or very grayed down blues mm -hmm. you know colors that are kind of like chalky, softer, muted, but still have a color personality to them. So what about paints? Now you were saying muted. So there was like shiny paints and paints that are matte, matted, matte, satin, yeah. eggshell, eggshell. semi-gloss, yeah, so, and gloss. So, so what, <laughs> yeah. what's the best yeah. to have? What, what's the best to have for if it's a, a surface that needs to be cleaned all the time compared to a, one that just kind of sits there and nobody touches? <laughs> it sits there. Uh, well, semi-gloss is often used for trim because trim gets a lot of touching and banging. Um, 
the the shinier it is, the more scrubbable it is. But you have to check the paint, and it will tell you on it how scrubbable it is, or how I don't color fa not color fast, but sturdy. So like if I like if right. I have a wash that I wash and I spray right. my cleaner on and I wipe it off and I've got white on my on my I'm using the wrong stuff to clean my wall. Probably, <laughs> yeah, happen. yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, you know. A good modern paint emulsion should be wipeable with a microfiber cloth and water. Depends on the paint you choose. Mm -hmm. So paint chemistry has changed more in the, t in the last 10 years than it has like in the past 100 years. And you can get scrubbable surfaces that don't have sheen to them. Okay. So. Okay. I had my house that I have is, you know, 40 years old and it's all stained on the outside. It's a Mission Brown stain, Cabot stain, and I went to get some more, and it's a totally different kind of oily stain. It's hmm. it um, the it's 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 a water base, so around the oil, and so right. So it's totally different than what I had, and I had painted, uh, put up a little shed, and I wanted to, I had some leftover from years ago, and the, the new color is not quite the same as it right, was with right. the old one that you told me it would be exactly the same, but. <laughs> Another paint myth, but it, but it is, but it, but it's a shed. But it, but the new stuff went on very nice, and I didn't. It was easy to clean off. I didn't have it all over my fingers and right, the nails that right. I did when I used the old paint. Well, so. all those oil-based things have been phased out over time. You can mm -hmm. still buy some oil paints in very small containers, but I think because of the environmental concerns, um, you know, that stuff yeah. just isn't available anymore. So. Okay. All right, well, thank you for joining us today. And thank you, our viewers, for joining us. And if you'd like to get any more information about the topics that we discussed or get in touch with these ladies, you can check out WBOA.org. Thank you.